Making a self-adjusting radius gauge. Step one, we trace the radius. Step two, I get that radius started. I do it that sander. Now we're coming from a straight line to a radius, so we'll go back to the guitar. So step three, we trace that radius again. Oftentimes you're going to trace this three times before you kind of reach your destination. Okay, back to the sander. Here we go, second run on the sander. So you can see I'm just kissing that pencil line. Back to the base. Okay, trace it one more time and I think this is going to get us what we need. Back to the guitar. Checking that against the actual fret. So what we're really after here is a gauge that's wide enough to be able to span the string spacing at the bridge. So now we slip that radius back, continue our line, go in the other direction, same thing, and this is going to give us something wide enough to span the bridge. Okay, now we've got that wide enough to span the bridge, so we'll just, just cut that back. So what we have now is we have a a concave radius that's going to produce a convex radius, which is what we want. So the tongue depressor was really just used to create a tracer plate for the actual radius gauge. I always flip these 180 to rule out any type of human error in the, the creation of that radius. Now, over to the bandsaw. So we stayed well back from that line. This is where we finish up the crown on this convex radius gauge. So this sander is on an air switch. It's a dead man switch. When I press on it, turns it on. When I release, it shuts off. Or what's referred to as an intermittent switch. I've got this and I'm just, just want to kiss that line. We're almost there. Okay, so before I go to the next step, I want to get a sense of how high the, the gauge needs to be. Now, if I set it on the plate, that's pretty good. If I set it on the guitar here, I'll have enough room to put that foam on the underside. So let's do that now. So next step, we've got a piece of two-sided tape that we're attaching to the underside of our little gauge here. And then finally, I have a piece of foam from a LR Bags pickup package. It's about the right density and about the right thickness. Just trim that off. Voila! We've got our self-adjusting radius gauge. So that looks like it'll give us just enough throw to be able to adjust the action on this thing. So what happens oftentimes with these long flexible base necks that's in an actual reverse bow, so it's kind of bent backwards like this. It's the string tension that will pull it up straight. And for all of you guys that have your GPS units, I use two of the long blocks for these long bass necks to be able to support them along that much longer length than a guitar. I'll leave the camera on there, and you'll watch it pull up straight as I tune it. So. Right now, with no tension on it, the strings are rattling against that back bow. But watch what happens when I tune it up. Okay, we basically got it tensioned here. Let's try this straight edge again. Yep, no more rocking now. That's the string tension has pulled that right up straight. What you need to understand with a truss rod and a base neck like this, you can loosen off the tension under string load, but you don't want to tighten it under string load. Loosen the strings off like you saw earlier, force it into a bit of a back bow, tune it up, and then you can gradually loosen off the tension if need be. But the next thing now is to adjust it to our radius gauge. 
So at this stage what I'm doing is I'm hiking up those middle two strings so they're right up out of the way. Okay, at this point I'm going to eyeball those two outside strings along the length of the neck to get the action where I'd like to see it. This should be able to come down a little bit. Let's have a look at that. Yep, that's a lot more presentable. Other side, oh yeah, that could come way down too. Let's put that radius gauge under again. Okay, so those two strings are not touching the radius gauge and the foam on the underside of that radius gauge is light enough that it doesn't lift the string up. It just kisses the underside radius of the two outside strings. Now we drop the middle strings down until they just touch. And you should try to bring those screws kind of equidistant so the saddle's not tilted. You don't want the string to compress the gauge, you just want it to just kiss that wood in, and that's what we got on that string. Okay, that's it. So now we have a perfect match to the fingerboard radius. Now we'll check the intonation. But just so you know, I had adjusted the intonation again. As soon as the saddles move this way or that way, then that height will change. So I set the intonation. I put my radius gauge under there again and checked it. Perfect, all the way across. This is a Mexican base. Well, the neck is perfect on this one. Didn't need a spot dress. It lays perfectly. Done deal. The last thing I wanted to mention is for these odd shaped lower bouts, like the jazz bass, and for just weird shaped guitars, flying V's and explorers, we actually have two straps that hook on to the strap pin on the end. We don't always need these, but there's times where there's a definite advantage, and this is one of those times. And that basically stops the whole thing from sliding down as you're dressing frets or doing whatever you're doing. So there you go. Another choice of a couple of different straps for all of you tech deck guys. Cheers. butter now. Thank mm -hmm. you.
a sweet little jazz bass. <laughs> slapping or walking. Well, Terry's on his way to pick it up, so I'm not going to have much more time with it. And there you have it, your self-adjusting radius gauge and how to adjust those long, flexible bass necks. Cheers.